My name is Catherine Zhao from Prastato Africa. We're here to get a brief on what uh, the prisons have achieved so far and the reforms mm -hmm. that they're conducting. I'm joined by... David Macharia, I'm a Deputy Commissioner of Prisons. All right. Uh, to start off, Mr. David, I'd like to get a brief on what are some of the achievements that the prisons have achieved so far. Uh, thank you. Broadly, other than uh, being able to execute our mandate as a department, basically containment of inmates and rehabilitating them. We could say one of the main achievements we have made is to open up ourselves to the general public. In the past, we have been like a, a closed organization. But uh, for the last 10, 15, 20 years, we have seen the department being open to the members of the public. We are interacting with organizations that we could not interact with before, including even the media. And that's why it's, you can now attest to this, that this interview is taking place. It couldn't have taken place maybe 20, 25 years ago. Okay. We have adopted what has loosely been called an open door policy, where anyone who has an interest in what we are doing, they want to know, know our challenges, they want to come in and support us, or they just want to benefit from some of our activities we have left our doors open for them to, to do that. All right. We have uh, also done a lot in terms of uh, the way we treat our inmates, the way we provide for them, compared to what used to happen 10, 15, 20, 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Earlier, the concept of uh, imprisonment was taken to be kind of punitive, but by and large, that has been uh, you know, dispensed with and we have adopted uh, the practice of treating inmates as it were, as human beings. Greater observation of international good practices has been our, our major guide. Right. In terms of uh, welfare of staff and welfare of inmates, that's another area we have given a lot of focus. In terms of their training, in terms of professionalizing the force, uh, the service, to enable us now address the needs of our, our, our customers, mainly the inmates, the staff, and also members of the, of the public. All right. Yeah. Uh, the prisons saw so, uh, a massive uh, reforms, especially during mm. uh, in the leadership mm. of Woody Awari. So has the guard of leadership in any way affected the reforms that were taking place? I would say no. The, the change of guard has not. Maybe it has it has accelerated mm -hmm. because already is something that we have seen as useful. So anything that would come between us and the expected success in obtaining, I mean, achieving our objectives, we actually work against that. So I would say the current leadership mm -hmm. is fully committed to seeing the reform that were initiated during the time of uh, Moody Award, we used to call him Uncle Moody, yes. and any others that are being initiated currently receive our full support, the whole support of the leadership, mm -hmm. plus now those who are, you know, the support staff. All right. Yeah. And uh, the budgetary allocations, I know there have been deficits in the various budgetary allocations, uh, would you say the 2015-2016 budgetary allocation is enough to sustain you? The, usually, this, this has been uh, one of our major major challenges. Is the budgetary allocation would uh, usually not be not be uh, enough. Uh -huh. But we keep reviewing, we keep reviewing and uh, engaging our, our, our counterparts in the treasury. We keep reviewing our budgeting so that we give realistic figures yeah. to uh, the, 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 the treasury, the budget office. Yes, but I can admit that uh, shortage of funds, call it uh, inadequate uh, budgetary allocation, mm -hmm. has been uh, a major, a major challenge. All right. Yeah. And how is the prisons uh, embracing the public-private partnerships? Public-private partnership, uh, first of all, is by making ourselves open. I talked of the open door policy yes. so that before mm -hmm. people never used to know what prisons they you know exist for. Yeah. Some there was an area of fear, there was an opaqueness that uh, what was the jailer to the ask now? What do they do? Yeah. Are we allowed to go and engage them? Mm -hmm. Can 
can we go and maybe interview them? Can we go and visit their farms? Can we go and, uh, you know, there has been a greater understanding of ourselves as a department by right. members of the public. And by so doing, mm -hmm. we have seen many, many organizations, many individuals locally and abroad now coming to us to give us, uh, give us uh, support. Mm -hmm. We have uh, a service chapter, we have a lot of documentation that we are currently doing, which we share with many stakeholders. We also attend any meeting, any gathering that we feel will give us an opportunity to engage with the stakeholders or the private sector to the extent that we will be able to be understood and uh, supported. All right. Maybe even appreciated. Okay. Uh, technologies, it's, uh, it has become very important, you know, and uh, every other institution is embracing technology. So which are some of the technological investments that you guys are em embracing in uh, running your activities? Uh, it's, it's true, technology has been, in the past, has been a challenge for, for us. Yeah. First, because of uh, maybe lack of skills to apply that technology. Mm -hmm. Secondly, lack of you know, finance, funding, because of uh, you know, the shortage that we have just spoken about. Yeah. But now, seeing the need for that, we, don't want to be left, we haven't been left behind actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, as you can see, I am now able to do my own you know, mails without having to refer to my secretary. I can, I'm computer retreat personal, and many, many other officers currently are computer retreat. Mm -hmm. Though we have not fully computerized uh, the department, it is something that we are now doing. We have a lot of our data management now uh, through IT. We have an IT unit that uh, dealing with that. Mm -hmm. In the field, uh, we have, uh, for security purposes, we have a uh, instituted uh, the use of uh, metal detectors like you saw when you were coming in, yeah. which are now helping us to you know, maintain our security, the security of our institutions much better than uh, we used to do before. Mm -hmm. The use of uh, the internet, the emails, most of the communication that have been going on between us for this particular feature mm -hmm. was through uh, the internet, small emails, without having to write uh, those long mails by the time they're delivered, etc., etc. So we are into use of technology, though we need maybe to do a little more so that we are fully there. All right. In a prison service, um, digitizing the prisoners' records. Yes, that, mm -hmm. uh, that is in the, in the process. Mm -hmm. In most of the facilities now, we can uh, access uh, prisoners' data mm -hmm. Uh, you know, online. And it, this has made it uh, very, very easy and fast. Mm -hmm. Instead of just asking for a small document to be delivered by bus or by, you know, a runner from uh, one of the far flung stations, mm -hmm. the touch of the button, you will know the number of inmates you have today, mm -hmm. who is uh, from victim for a side of friends, you want to know their ages, if you do break down yeah. uh, the touch of the button. All right. Yes. Which are some of the rehabilitation programs that you have running in the prisons and how successful would you say these have been uh, in some of the inmates? My, uh, rehabilitation is one of our main, one of our key, key, key mandates, rehabilitation of inmates. Mm -hmm. And uh, all along, we have engaged them in a program that suit their requirements. And uh, apart from now, the, the ones that give them technical skills, like uh, uh, carpentry work, uh, motor mechanics, uh, building, mm -hmm. farm work, uh, painting, etc., etc. We have also programs that focus on, on, on the mind, mm -hmm. or on the heart, because you, be, you agree that uh, behavior that leads to maybe criminal acts, uh, they come from the mind. Yeah. So we are focusing on the minds of our, the, the inmates so that uh, they can change their thinking mm -hmm. and uh, they can change their, their behavior when they, 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 they go out. So one of the programs we have, uh, this aspect of uh, offering them uh, psychosocial counseling. Yeah. Psychosocial counseling, we have the trained counselors. Mm -hmm. And recently, we, that's one of the areas where we drew a lot of uh, professional staff psychologists, psychiatrists, social workers, you know, 
then for the, the spiritual the spiritual nourishment, we have our, our, our chaplaincy. Okay. We are composed of uh, the, 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 the Christians and the Muslims, so that the needs, the spiritual needs, are catered for mm -hmm. while they are in, uh, in custody. All right. Uh, I'll touch on healthcare. At a time when you know there was the, out the cholera outbreak. So how does the service ensure that you know proper health care is taken? And um, on, in the case of HIV, the inmates who are living with HIV AIDS, what steps are taken to ensure that uh, you know they are safe and uh, they are healthy? Uh, first and foremost, for health and hygiene, mm -hmm. we have uh, we have a fully fledged uh, department, a sub department within the service mm -hmm. uh, called the. Kenya Prisons Health mm -hmm. Service. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it's, it's, it's very well established. We have our own staff. Currently, we are employing our own staff, although we still have the back that are you know, seconded to us by the Ministry of Health. Mm -hmm. and in every facility, we have a medical, call it a medical unit, call it a medical unit, maybe for lack of a better word, just call it a hospital. Okay. If the health and hygiene needs are not met by the personnel that are there. We usually refer them to the nearby government hospital, either district, provincial, referral hospitals. Mm -hmm. so the, the, the health of the inmates and staff are uh, taken care of. Mm -hmm. At the same time, we have uh, public health technicians within the department who, on a daily basis, now monitor uh, the, 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 the health and the hygiene of uh, the facilities. And also, mm -hmm. even uh, technically, not even technically, mm -hmm. our own staff is also in charge. <coughs> Cleanliness of prisons is a routine operation. So every day, there's a gang of inmates, uh, by gang, <laughs> there's a group of inmates <laughs> whose duty is to maintain cleanliness in the staff lines, in the, the sleeping compounds, the, the prisoners' sleeping compounds, when their beddings are aired, the windows are open, all that is monitored by mm -hmm. an officer with a group of inmates mm -hmm. whose duty allocation in prison is exactly that. Musafi, okay. Yajela. If I can use our, our, our local language. Our national language. If, it is not, <laughs> if a prison is not clean, as okay. an officer in charge, mm -hmm. certainly you, you, you are judged very, very badly, mm -hmm. very negatively. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's it. Right. Uh, there were plans to uh, transform the community health center into a referral hospital. Yeah. Uh, how far is this? Uh, before I come to that, you mentioned also the, those who may come to us uh, HIV Even with AIDS. HIV. So screening is done is done on entry. Mm -hmm. and, uh, for anyone who may be in that condition, they are given treatment that is commensurate mm -hmm. with their status. First, in terms of uh, medical care, when they need the medical care, they are given. When they need special diet, they are given that. Yeah. Right. When they need uh, counseling, peer counseling, mm -hmm. they are also given that. Mm -hmm. And then the, the, the normal bodily support that is required inside. We have a very, very active, very, very active AIDS control unit, prison mm -hmm. aid. HIV AIDS control unit is one of the most active, I would say, in the country. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. Uh, the plans to transform community health center into a referral hospital. What is the progress of the, the the progress is on course. Mm -hmm. It's on course, and we are in uh, constant touch with the Ministry of Health. All right. They are supervising that, mm -hmm. and uh, that is something that we are looking forward to. Mm -hmm. And we believe, uh, you know, within a reasonable mm -hmm. period of time. To attain that status. Right. Yes. Uh, there were plans to build a girls' postal center at committee still. Yes. Uh, what, you, what is the progress? Yes, of that? Uh, that the, the specifically it is called Kamai. Mm -hmm. Kamai Girls Postal Institution. That mm -hmm. will be its, its official name. Mm -hmm. It is within the larger committee, committee prison compound. Mm -hmm. uh, and it came uh, uh, the need. Mm -hmm. we, we, before this, we only had. Uh, Postal Institute for Boys. Uh, certainly, there was one a need for one for girls, and uh, it has made very good uh, progress. Good funding, sufficient funding provided by, by the government for that, and it is being uh, constructed under the supervision of the Minister of Works. Yeah. 
and uh, progress, I could say, is maybe 90-95% complete. It should be opening in the next, uh, certainly less, in less than one year. Right. Uh, I can say that, and then we can start admitting uh, uh, postal guards in mm -hmm. that uh, premier institution. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, which are some of the government agencies and uh, state corporations that you work with, and how do you describe your relationship with them? Uh, our relationship with the, the government agencies and other stakeholders that we are working with has been very good, very, very warm. It is getting stronger and stronger. Uh, like I said in the beginning, we have not been very open in the, in the, in the distant past, and we, we thought that was working against us. Mm -hmm. So we have sought to establish and maintain a very good working relationship with the, those who have interest in us or those we have interest in. Uh, focusing on our main customer who is uh, the prisoner. And in this case, we are working with uh, mostly the judiciary. The judiciary we work very closely with, we work very closely with the police, mm -hmm. we work very closely with the Department of Probation and uh, Aftercare Services. Mm -hmm. We work uh, very closely with the, not just the government institutions, like the recently the Kenya National um, Commission on Human Rights. Mm -hmm. They are coming to prisons every other day. They want to make inquiries or to see how prisoners are being treated. Yeah. Uh, Legal Resources Foundation, that's another one we are working very closely with, especially when it comes to offering our staff training in uh, paralegal, paralegal services and a number of uh, a few others. What I can say we, uh, strongly is that uh, we are getting very, very close interactions with the, the stockholders who have an interest in, uh, in, uh, in dealing with inmates. Right. And of course we are seeing a lot of benefits out of that. And we would encourage uh, more and more to you know, work with us. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the case of encroachment of prison land. Uh, there have been cases, and uh, I know there are cases in, in court. Uh, how are you handling this, and uh, what do you feel the government? Is the government assisting you enough to ensure that you know, prison land is not uh, taken up by private developers. Yeah, it's true. Some in the past, some there was some encroachment mm -hmm. where some prison lands were taken up either by individuals or some organisations, mm -hmm. and uh, the department took that uh, up seriously with the Ministry of Lands to survey and uh, offer certificates or title deeds to prison lands, including those that have not been grabbed or encroached on, so that we can prevent uh, future encroachment. One of uh, the weaknesses in the past was that we had some lands that were not, the documents for those lands were not maybe available. It would have been easy for someone to say, okay, baka hapa, this one is mine. Or they can lay claim on it, and then we start now kissing. Yeah. So what we have done is we have identified all those land pieces uh, and parcels that were encroached upon and we have taken up the matter with the, 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 the judiciary. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are now in courts and uh, they, are, they are progressing and we hope we will get a uh, well, certainly fair judgment mm -hmm. where it is true that the land belongs to prison and also that work with the lands now mm -hmm. to take care of all parcels that uh, have either not been fully surveyed or fully or well documented, that that is done as a, as a priority. You're right. Yeah. Uh, what are some of the challenges that you encounter and maybe what are some of the mitigation challenges that the service has put in place to counter this? Mm, we, in the beginning, we talked of uh, budgetary allocation. Yes. Our, our funding has not been uh, you know, uh, up to the expected uh, level. Mm -hmm. So the way we are dealing with this is uh, getting, you know, regular communication with the, the treasury and also being involved in the way we do budgeting is done. But, uh, we are not uh, shortchanged. Mm -hmm. That uh, vigorous budgeting, no item is left, no item is, uh, you know, under explained. Sometimes treasury said we didn't know that you needed this much mm -hmm. because you didn't tell us. So we assumed for food you only required maybe 10,000, for example. Well, in the real sense, if you told us you wanted 25,000, even if you didn't get 25, maybe you could have given you 22 or 21. 
uh, something like that. Uh, the area of congestion. Congestion has been a major, major, major problem we're mm -hmm. facing us. Yes, our, our capacity is always over by nearly, almost in some places, 100%. Mm -hmm. So congestion, overcrowding is a problem because we do not have enough space in some cases. In other cases, uh, we have uh, inmates who should have been engaged in other activities. Mm -hmm. The court should have diverted them to other, other activities instead of bringing them to, 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 to prison. And that uh, congestion now becomes a problem. Then we are dealing with this. Mm -hmm. One, we are putting in extra accommodation. We have, we have been funded to put in extra accommodation wards, we call them accommodation wards, mm -hmm. or accommodation blocks for, for, for inmates. We rehabilitate the old ones uh, and we also build new ones. New prisons are also being built in uh, you know, a number of, a number of areas, uh, the Hika, the Tok Tok, uh, many other new, new, new districts. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, maybe staffing. Staffing has also been a, a challenge. Mm -hmm. You may see all these fellows in uniform, but uh, given the recommended staff inmate ratio, mm -hmm. we are still below the, the internationally accepted uh, standard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So we will continue, of course, engaging uh, Treasury to give us more money to recruit more staff. We will, of course, continue training and retraining our staff so that they are equal to the expectations of uh, handling uh, modern, modern, modern inmates, modern, modern suspects. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, moving forward, what are some of the future plans that the Kenya Prison Service has? Uh, one, I just hinted, closely hinted to professionalizing the force, uh, the mm -hmm. service. We want to have a service with officers who are capable mm -hmm. of handling every kind of inmate who is brought to us. Starting now with the, the modern modern crimes that we, we, we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. Drug inmates, terrorists, uh, cyber crime, uh, a few others. Criminals are becoming more clever and more complicated. Mm -hmm. We want to train our officers to be equal to that task. And in so doing, we are now, the, the current recruitment that we have just undertaken this year mm -hmm. Has taken a consideration of that. Mm -hmm. yeah, because there are the professionals in various fields, yeah, who will be now taking the, the service uh, forward. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and staff welfare, is that properly looked into? That's an area that is uh, key again mm -hmm. uh, because uh, a happy officer is certainly likely to give in more than one who is always complaining, we didn't have this, this is not being done, nobody cares about us, mm -hmm. and then so on and so forth. So welfare, we have a welfare section. Mm -hmm. We have a welfare section. Welfare section is under the directorate of um, rehabilitation that we spoke about. Yeah. So when rehabilitation takes care of our inmates, the welfare aspect takes care of, of the welfare of staff. So in terms of uh, provision of uniform, we have uh, picked that as uh, one of our entry points. Before, you could hear officers saying, oh, I only have one pair of shoes, I only have one pair of uniform which I wash at night. But now, at any one time, each officer has two pairs of uniform at the minimum. Mm -hmm. yeah. The aspect of um, the health unit within our department that I spoke about, it also takes care of uh, the, 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 the staff, staff aspect of, uh, of, uh, of health. Provision of uh, recent provision of uh, good transport, extra transport since the time of uh, Komodo, like you said. Mm -hmm. It was not only for inmates because the same uh, transport is being used to ferry staff mm -hmm. when they are going for any engagement. Yes. All right. Uh, something that I want you to touch on briefly. We visited the prisons and uh, they're doing really good work. Um, you know, the woodwork, the metal work. Do they gain from this such that if I'm an inmate and uh, I get released, 
do my family do I have something that I know at least my family will benefit from this because I've been you know doing this from the prisons uh, yes other than now saying mm -hmm. the prisoner has attained mm -hmm. the skills that they can rely on when they go out mm -hmm. and this one has happened we, we can count many many inmates who have now their own small workshops self-employed or they have employed one or two people mm -hmm. that one is a direct benefit mm -hmm. uh, their families as they, of course they would benefit from from that also but when prisoners are being uh, released there is uh, something we call a learning scheme mm -hmm. so every as they are in there's a small uh, amount of money that is kept for them mm -hmm. which they get upon upon release we also we also uh, connect them there is a, a, a discharge board on admission mm -hmm. there is a board that considers the, the rehabilitation needs of any, every inmate right. on discharge the reception board now converts itself to a discharge board mm -hmm. that also looks at the needs of the prisoner who is being discharged and this is the one that now connects them with possible employers or possible supporters who can either give them like tools or some little really you know, extra money uh -huh. maybe to, to post them uh, to, to post them up. Right. But it's an area that of course requires a constant uh, review. Uh -huh. yeah. Um the amount that they earn, well, I know the figure is not high. Um, are there any plans to review this the figure that you know they get or in the prison? Yes, in the in the proposed uh, act, in the proposed act, the, this has been addressed. In the proposed act, because it is, it's, it's true, but it may not be uh, as much as one would want. They may not get as as much as they would want, but it should be realistic. And the current act that uh, is being reviewed, uh -huh. uh, which should be which should actually be launched, maybe within the month, right. we'll get to know about this, uh -huh. has addressed that aspect of uh, compensating inmates for their labor mm -hmm. quite widely. Right. Yes. And um, is there a market, a ready market for the products that they make? Yes, there is mm -hmm. There is uh, a ready market. There is a ready market mm -hmm. and one of the things that we do is we advertise our items. Mm -hmm. We have uh, opened uh, showrooms in uh, most of our prisons and we, we, we of course inform the members of the public that the items in there are for sale. They are not just for inmates or for staff. Yeah. They are for the members of the public. Uh, during shows, agricultural shows, mm -hmm. the famous one being Nairobi, prisons is one of the key key participants. We compete with all these big, big farms you see, big, big ministries, mm -hmm. big, big organizations, and we are just a small, mm -hmm. a small department. Mm -hmm. That is something I can say with pride, yeah. that is one of the avenues that we use to market the products that are made by inmates. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of light up that we do so that the members of the public can be informed about that fact. And uh, at any one time, in any corner where agricultural shows and other exhibitions are taking place, mm -hmm. uh, we make a lot of sense. Of course, uh, most of the money is plowed back to the same uh, rehabilitation uh, activities. All right. Yeah. Uh, still on that, uh, mm -hmm. The machinery, or especially uh, we visited the, the shoes, the shoe section, and uh, you realize that maybe need machinery and maybe other facilities to help them, you know, uh, improve the, the supply and the production. Are there any plans as you address the technological issues to address the machinery issue? Yes, there is. The, the, the director of, uh, you know, technical services currently we are calling it director of prison enterprises. Mm -hmm. Is, is working on that. Right. It's a concern review. There's a need actually to modernize our, our workshops, mm -hmm. uh, and I think uh, a lot of uh, you know focus has, has gone into that. It okay. is true. Mm -hmm. We need to have more modern more modern machines for the sake of efficiency uh, in our production. Okay. Yeah. As we wind up. What is your parting shot and what message do you have for the young generation? Okay, and so my, my, my advice to the young generation is crime see poor. Crime does not pay. Crime does not pay. Let's uh, avoid uh, any activities that may bring us into conflict with the law so that uh, we benefit from the services that are being offered to us. 
by various uh, actors. Yeah. For prisons, I would say we appreciate uh, the organizations and individuals who have uh, partnered with us. It is time now for everyone to come on board. We are open and uh, obviously we are doing a, a good job. I would say we are doing a good job in an area that had previously been misunderstood uh, and in an area that needs to be you know, invigorated so that we can move ahead uh, better than we used to do before.